I'm uh, Nicolas Poulin, uh, technical manager at uh, Transello Americas. Uh, today's webinar is about Forge NXT 3.1. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, happy to uh, to see uh, so many of you have chosen to register for this uh, seventh uh, webinar. Um, the topic today is the Forge NXT 3.1, which has been released about two weeks ago. Uh, so for this webinar, we have extended the invitation to not only users, um, so that everyone can see a demo of a new version. Uh, so thank you again for joining us. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use the chat feature uh, to ask your question, and I will do my best to address uh, the, the questions on the go. Uh, this is a live demo. So I'll go back and forth between the presentation and the software. All right, without uh, further delay, uh, let's begin on the new uh, version of Forge NXT 3.1. All right, so this is the agenda for today. <coughs> and um, so first part will be uh, regarding the user interface. Uh, which has been the main um, focus for this uh, new release. Uh, so we'll have um, several uh, you know, features, uh, go through it, and um, show you uh, basically how it works, where it is located. Uh, second, it's going to be more about customization, how you can customize your environment uh, and basically make it uh, use, and the just way for you to uh, to work with software the most uh, efficient way. Uh, number three will be uh, regarding process. Uh, so we uh, added uh, you know, several questions, uh, some help coding as well, and uh, all, the, um, all the process related um, features. And the last part will be about efficiency. Uh, so we'll have um, some um, uh, features again regarding the efficiency of your work. Okay. Um, all right. So first is the interface. Uh, so that's what we are going to look at now. Uh, we'll see uh, different color options now available. We're already available in three point zero, but I just want to uh, um, go back on that very quick. Uh, home menu help access. Um, really useful uh, features, which is a drag and drop uh, for geometries, also projects, um, which are the um, things as well, the contextual uh, menu that is really uh, helpful as well. Uh, same functions, multi objects, multi windows, uh, shortcuts, and setting review. All right, so I'm going to escape from this uh, presentation now. And I'm going to go directly to the interface. All right, so <clears throat> let's open Forge 3.1. Okay, so uh, regarding the uh, colors I was talking about, so this is uh, the home menu. Uh, if you go to settings here, and we'll go back to that because there are several uh, things here and things we have added. Um, but here, if you want to pick your theme, you can have the colorful, which is the default one here, dark gray or black. Um, so I'm just going to show you how it looks like in black, for example. Uh, for that, you'll have to restart the uh, forge. There it goes. So that's your environment. Uh, on top of that, uh, you'll see that you can also uh, do appearance, and you can you know, pick the way you want you know, things to appear. So obviously, you'll um, let you uh, play with that and see what uh, what is best for you. Okay. Uh, regarding the home menu now, 
Um, we have, because we had it, um, several things. Um, so mostly what has changed is um, here we have now tools that uh, lead you to this window where you can access. Um, you still have the launcher, not for long, but you still have the launcher and other tools such as, you know, code reality uh, generation tool, um, the uh, reality uh, database, and, you know, other things like the machines, uh, machines configuration, which is uh, important to set up your environment. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, um, the help menu too is quite uh, important, so you have, you know, uh, easy access here to the uh, online help, uh, which leads you here, and then you have, you know, tutorials, um, graphical interface, um, a lot of uh, different interesting um, uh, explanations, and, um, you know, showing exactly how it works. Uh, by the way, this um, online app is uh, online, so it's updated regularly. Um, so I'll uh, advise to um, you know, check the um, the help uh, quite uh, regularly. Okay. We also have, uh, and I'm going to use that one as an example. So when you are working now on uh, with your project. You can also uh, get to uh, the online help quite uh, easily. I don't have to go back to the home menu. Uh, you have here on the top right, you have this uh, little help, and it will bring you uh, the same the same location here. Okay. Uh, you can also use a search engine, which I use all the time. It's quite um, useful to find you know things that. Uh, you find into the interface and want to know more about. Okay, and we'll see those menu uh, after as well. All right, so um, let's do before. So I'm just going to uh, open a new one now. All right, so one thing I find really interesting if I open just a bigger uh, process, I'm just going to open that. You have the drag and drop uh, options. So I'm just going to do that. <clears throat> so here I have my uh, geometries here. Those are step five, it could be STL. Uh, those are the usual um, you know, formats to support. Um, so from here, I can directly bring in my file on um, the object, okay, and it will open the, uh, um, you know, the, the geometry, all right, so I can do that. And then uh, I'll do this die. Okay. And I can go ahead with, uh, for example, I have things here. Okay. Uh, one thing that is not new, but you know, might want to know, you can change your name here. For example, here I have more um, objects or dice that the default uh, template. So I'm just you know, using the duplicate. Here and I'm gonna bring my uh, all the thing here. Okay, so we'll change it to pin three and etc. I do one more example here. There we go. Okay. So all that that is quite easy now to. Um, you know, bring some uh, objects, just drag and drop, uh, avoid uh, all the browsing I usually do. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to show you, and I'm going to start from a new uh, example here, that uh, something that was already available, but I uh, want to emphasize that is the import of assembly. Um, so you can do that as well. I'm just going to bring one here, which is the same. Uh, I'll go on here, and I'm just going to use the um, dice here. This is an ascending. Okay, so you have the assembly here, and now you can assign uh, each one to, and you can see when you click on that, it highlights in gray uh, which one we are uh, doing here. So, for example, I can assign it to a low die, that one, that one is a pin, so I can do uh, that one, and that's uh, the billet, and here is uh, another one, which is the top die here, I can see here. Um, so, for example, here I don't have enough, so what I can do is just create a new object and go and grab um, just the size. Okay, so it's going to create all of that. Uh, I'm going to stop here. You can pick the ones you want. You don't have to pick everything. Okay? All right. So, um, that is a quite an interesting feature as well, and save some time, okay? And obviously you can, you know, always change uh, the name here. All right, I'm going to move to uh, the next now. Uh, and I'm going to reopen uh, in the example here. And by the way, the drag and drop also works with uh, projects, um, and uh, you can just look at the results as well. Um, you actually have that into the online help. Uh, it should find somewhere. Uh, anyway, obviously I'm not going to find it, but uh, I yeah. have this explanation into the uh, online help as well. All right, um, so we also added some um, contextual uh, menu, so it's basically a right click here. Um, so that's interesting because you know you can access really uh, quickly um, different views. Uh, you can pick also some, you know, if you want a node, triangle, etc. access static plane, distance, it's really uh, great to have that, you can, you know, have a measurement real quick here, X, Y, and Z. Um, animation, uh, here you can do just a preview. Uh, and you can see that. Um, you actually access uh, that as well here, once you have animation. Uh, some properties, motion, uh, some results, and also, you know, all the windows, which was already there before. Okay, so now if I switch from setup to analysis mode, okay, so those are the results. I can access some quick results like temperature here, okay, that's quite interesting as well. Uh, when you move to or select the results, you automatically, uh, automatically uh, switch from uh, object picking to a node picking. Uh, which sometimes can be, um, you know, you want to go back to object picking, so it's easy now, it's just a right click, don't have to navigate the whole menu. So that is uh, great. So you have a lot of um, 
different things here. You can add the plots as well, right? So I'm just going to do uh, the full folder for that, for example. Okay. Uh, create animation. the distances okay and you can see how it progressed okay so those are bookable uh, windows as well okay you can put them wherever you want okay nope no not quite the whole thing here there we go okay All right, some saving features as well. So you have a lot of uh, additional features here, so you can save the process as usual. Uh, you can also save just a copy that all the data just to make sure you don't miss uh, anything. Um, so you can just save a copy. Uh, here are to open the new process. Uh, you can access the tool manager, open the project, uh, open workspace or save a workspace as well as yeah. Okay, but over functions. Okay, you have the auto save. Uh, you can click that and um, you know activate the auto save as well, which could be uh, quite interesting. Um, <clears throat> this uh, prevents you know if you have any crash or anything that happened with network. Um, at least you'll have a, uh, a copy of that. Okay. Um, all right, so there's also what I wanted to show you is the multi object. So for that, I'll go back to the setup menu. Uh, and I can just get rid of uh, that. Uh, okay. In object. Um, so if you were to move, uh, um, you know, several objects at the same time, um, so we can access the um, you know, I click down, for example, and go to, uh, um, sorry, yeah, go to multi-object, and then you can move, select the ones you want to move. So for example, I just want to move the lower die and upper die, okay? And, um, well, I'm just going to put a certain value here, uh, 10. And then you have both, uh, you know, object moving. You have rotate, uh, you know, rotation, scaling, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do, um, you know, again, efficiency in using the, uh, the interface. Um, all right, the um, other thing I'm going to show you now, it's in the analysis, uh, um, and it's the multi-window. So you know that you have access to several windows. I'm just going to add one more window here. Uh, it could be a different uh, process. By the way, you can also, if you click on the info here, you can um, check, you know, different uh, display views. Okay. Um, so with uh, multi-window, you have, um, since you click on your uh, access to some um, uh, synchronization here, so you can synchronize everything here. So see, it got rid of the window. For example, if I get rid of that, uh, he will do it both, okay? Um, and I will see, I'm going to show the sound tool here, for example, okay? So you have access to that. You can unclick the one you don't want to um, uh, synchronize. So for example, the results, if I want the sound tool here, but here I'm going to uh, put, for example, the stream, okay? So you have both. Now, if you do an animation, <clears throat> so remember, we can access here, or you can use Control M, okay? Um, there's actually one already, I'm just going to redo it. So, create an animation here. Okay, uh, and I'm going to do the same here. So I'm just going to use Control M. There we go.
Okay, so we have two animations, they are not synchronized. Okay, so what we can do is just go to a uh, window and then um, into the um, size in animation and then click here to synchronize and all seven. They are all both synchronized. All right, so quite useful also for um, uh, post-processing analysis. <clears throat> okay, so you've seen, for example, I have a control M to have shortcut. Uh, we have much more than that. Um, so if you go to the online help and type on uh, shortcuts here, you'll have all the list of all the shortcuts that you can access. So the con uh, context menu, we'll see that as well. Um, and here you have a list of all the uh, shortcuts that are available, uh, some additional shortcuts with uh, the add key. Um, so again, refer to, uh, to that, you have an explanation of what I've uh, said before about the quick access toolbar. Um, again, our Dragon Ball, that's what I was looking for, uh, for example. So uh, you can drop a project into the AMT uh, process, it will load up the process or the project automatically. Uh, here are the mesh that I demonstrated already. The DON slide that uh, to look at the only at the results. Um, you know, so things like that. Um, again, it's all in the online help. All right, and uh, to finish on this, I'll go back to uh, settings. Um, so here you have. Uh, several settings. One I uh, strongly recommend is to have the automatic setting of rotation point activated. Uh, it is not by default, uh, so I will strongly recommend to have that uh, so that when you rotate uh, objects, uh, it's automatically set up to where the mouse is or the cursor. Okay, so here we've seen um, the appearance. Uh, again, you can get your own. Um, uh, then here, configuration. So that is uh, quite interesting as well. Uh, you can uh, basically customize your uh, contextual uh, menu, okay? And basically the way you do it, you can go through uh, different you know, things here and just drag it and drop it into, for example, analysis mode. Okay, and then I'll have that into the analysis mode. Um, so you can see here there's an uh, actual video showing how to do it. For example, plot, bring in here, and now it is into uh, the analysis mode, et cetera. Okay. So uh, again, um, just to bring you some um, uh, you know, efficiency in the flow of uh, running uh, and setting up simulations. Okay. All right, so let's go back to my presentation here. And uh, we are done with the first part. We go to a customization, uh, which is going to be a bit faster because we are a little bit um, late on that. Okay, so here, uh, favorite and source quick access bar, which already in it for custom action, control line, particle tracking. Uh, we have a uh, new .csv export uh, to NCIS, for example, or other uh, software that uh, can make that. That's quite interesting. Uh, really quick, we'll talk about the Python script as well. Okay. So first, uh, okay, um, favorite. All right, so when you get to the um, home menu, and you can take, you know, different proxies. You can also create your own into your user group uh, here. Uh, but obviously, it's going to be some uh, processes that you use more than others. Um, so one quick way, instead of going through this list all the time, uh, what you can do is just favorite those. Okay. So for example, here in my favorite for now, I have nothing. Just going to favorite that one. Uh, I don't know that one and that one. Okay. Now go to your favorite, and they are all here. So you have quick access to it. If you uh, don't want them in there, uh, in there anymore, then just click on the star and it disappears. Okay. So that was a quick one. 
Um, the quick access bar, we already uh, seen it. Um, and so you can personalize it as well. You take you know, some things off uh, from that. All right. Um, control line. Um, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, sorry, before the custom, uh, control line, you have a custom actions. So those are here. Uh, the defaults are the fold, marking rate, and uh, it's the door settings. Uh, I've created two um, myself. Um, so if you click on this deal um, arrow here, you have access to here, and you can add your own, you know, give the name you want, okay, and then load the file. Okay, so that brings you here. Unfortunately, it's not where you want to go. It's into um, the resources, uh, resources and FT GUI view configurations. So, and basically the way I did it, I took one uh, already existing. Okay, and just show you here, uh, and I just modified that. Uh, basically, here I entered the name of the scatter I wanted. Uh, and change, you know, to, for example, 50, uh, uh, 50 levels of results, okay? I uh, did the same for the hot um, temperature. Uh, it's obviously uh, it's a little bit, you know, complex in there, and you have to be familiar, so, you know, easiest way is just to contact your technical support, and uh, we'll do that for you. Um, and then when you get used to it, you can uh, define your own, okay? So if I... All right, I'm just going to delete that one, okay? And uh, you can add an icon as well, uh, just choose the default one. So here, if I put the temperature, here you can see I like to have more um, levels of different color shades, so that's what I see here. Uh, and if I want to switch to strain, then I have the strain. So you can really customize the way you want to look at, at the results. Um, so that's quite interesting. All right, so that's for the uh, custom actions. Now, control line. Uh, so control line, you can uh, access it through uh, the result selector here. And I'm gonna take the uh, equivalent strain, for example, right click on it, and then you have show as control line. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit bigger here. So you can see uh, this, so the best is I'm going to remove the French, and now you have your control line, okay? And this depends uh, on, you know, what you set up in terms of results. For example, if I reduce to five, so you have um, those lines that show you the level of strain here or torture, whatever you're looking at. And so that's you know, also quite interesting to, to look at that. Okay. Um, so that's it for um, that. I'm going to hide that. <clears throat> um, particle tracking, it's a new feature. Um, uh, cylinder. There we go. I'm just reducing this here. Okay. And then uh, what you can see is. Uh, the um, old tracking points. All right, so forward, uh, cylinders. Okay, and I'm going to change the view uh, to lines, for example. Okay, so here are the particle tracks. Okay, so you can see. Uh, it's basically kind of marking like a current flow of flow net. Okay, so um, you can, you know, play with that and it gives you some uh, interesting information about uh, about your material flow. Okay. All right, so um, that's it for, for these uh, features. Um, the other um, functions I want to show you the temperature, <clears throat> you can now export, um, or as usual, you can dot me, which is our, you know, our uh, own uh, format, STL, UND, and now CSV, 
Okay, so you can export that, pick the um, results you want to export, um, and you know select where you want to export that. Okay. Okay, and uh, if I look at it really quick, uh, yeah, so a CSV a dot may was also exported. So here you have for X, you know, all the results uh, for each, each nodes uh, that are now available. So you have a 12,935 12, uh, nodes and you have all the results to it, uh, which you can now uh, in, import into uh, NCS, for example, or other similar uh, software for subsequent operations. Okay, uh, Python console has also something that was uh, implemented in the previous version. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick uh, all of you of that. Uh, so if you click on script here, open and run, you directly end up in uh, this folder and you have some examples here. Um, obviously you can create your own, uh, but it is a Python uh, language, so uh, not super easy. But for example, if I want to convert uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, you can <coughs> do that uh, easily. Now it's been added. So if I go to results, I have time to Fahrenheit here. Okay, now I have my information in Fahrenheit. Okay, so uh, it's quite uh, interesting. You can do that for any uh, results. That is the post processing uh, feature. Okay, all right, so that's it for the customization uh, process. Um, so we'll see, uh, you're probably aware of that, but we've been partnering with uh, Quaker Hooten uh, for the past two years, I think. Uh, so we added already a lot of questions uh, from um, their database in uh, our software. We added some more. Um, so actually, I'm going to show you really quick for that. I'm going to open a new process, and I'll go with a question. There we go. And this partnership is actually going to go even further. We are working with them on uh, uh, additional topics such as um, friction, uh, lubricant, I should, I should call it. Um, so um, really helpful to bring you some uh, um, more uh, useful data uh, for you guys. All right, so here if I go to um, heat transfer coefficient, so default is here with air, but if I double click here, we have quarter uh, Newton, okay? And here are their um, questions, okay? So you can pick uh, one. And here you have some uh, information about you know, this question, you have even um, a chart to show you <coughs> the heat transfer coefficient uh, uh, evolution, okay? Uh, and here the table, uh, depending on the temperature, okay? Uh, you can see, you can also add it to your uh, favorite, okay? So, for example, if I had that one and that one, now I can just go to my favorite and they are here. I don't have to go through the whole um, the whole uh, thing again, okay? All right, so that's it for uh, the questions. Uh, now I'm going to show you an option for uh, the post pass. And for that, I'm going to use uh, code forming.
Okay. All right. So um, one thing that is um, interesting in um, code forming is, is that's actually the ending on the help is, is extending quite uh, uh, well. So here you have the phosphated area. Uh, what happened is you cut uh, the, um, you know, the 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 bar to get your billet, right? And then you have the phosphated area here, but this is not phosphated. Okay. So how do we take that into consideration? Well, the way we do it is we are going to assign a set here, and then we are going to use uh, simply a, a multiplication or multiplicative uh, coefficient. Okay. So the way it works is. Uh, if you have a um, friction coefficient or a lubricant uh, with M bar 2.4 and a mu 2.2, that's for Coulomb uh, um, low, um, then it will be multiplied by this. So in this uh, set, you will reduce um, the friction and make it uh, lighter, which is uh, what you want to do for, for set it. Okay, and then you'll have this specific area um with um with the phosphate uh, applied to it and not on the uh, two hands okay that's quite easy yeah it's uh um you have this option in um phosphate coding okay and um well, i need to add a geometry so i'm just gonna get something here Okay, I'm going to that here, and then I go to advanced, phosphate coding, add a new set, uh, the best to use the pencil plane. I'm going to use that. Okay, that's already all my surface. And here I put my coefficient, so like 17%, for example. Okay, that's it. All right, and obviously this set is going to follow the deformation of the billet, uh, so we'll be always attached to it. Okay, um, the last part, I'm just going to explain real quick and we are running out of time anyway. So the yield computation is <clears throat> um, a way to, we, we work with our optimization uh, tool for that. Um, basically, um, going to give you what is the best, um, you know, billet volume uh, to achieve the final product. So um, the user will bring on the um, ideal or theoretical um, uh, end product, you know, end part after forging, uh, forging operation. Uh, and based on this volume, um, the uh, software, Forge, will calculate what is the best uh, volume for that, okay? Um, so that was something we were quite for, uh, mostly uh, sheet metal forming and things like that. So that could be also very useful uh, cogging as well. Uh, when you go from an ingot down to a specific um, semi-finished product. Um, so there's more gonna, more going to come up with, uh, with this feature. Probably going to do uh, maybe not a full webinar, but um, something about, about it later. Okay. <clears throat> All right, last part, efficiency. Um, so a couple of things we've done here, mesh boxes, utilization, uh, it's all with you, automatic report that is already uh, in, but I just wanted to uh, mention that again, the one-click sharing, the same thing, it's a reminder, and then uh, quick information about the uh, UI activation. All right, so... I'm going to wrap it up as fast as possible for you guys. I'm going to save that. Okay, and I'm going to open this one. All right, so that one was a chain. It's just single. We're going to have an upsetting, which is a 2D. <coughs> and then we have a transition to move it to 3D. Uh, and then the blocker. Okay, so you have that, and then you have the blocker in 3D. Okay, um, so one thing you can do now with a shortcut is uh, with a control and the arrow, so the right arrow here, I can jump from one 
to another quite easily, and then I can just use the arrow to move down the, um, the um, you know, all the results. Uh, another thing you can do is also animation. So when you set up the animation, you can also uh, have the full case. Okay, so here I'm gonna go. So if you have two in chain like that, you can chain them all. Okay, so we see here the 2D and then the 3D. Okay, and you see you can add results to that. Okay, uh, mesh boxes. Yes, I wanted to mention something about that. So if I'm in setup mode uh, in the blocker, uh, okay, so here we have some uh, mesh boxes to have a fine mesh in, in this area and the top area. Uh, so before you cannot get rid of uh, those into the preview, so now you can select here what you want to see. Um, so you can remove the top one. Um, so it's really useful when you have a lot of uh, boxes to you know, know which one you're um, dealing with. Okay. There we go. Um, automatic reporting. Uh, so again, that's something that was uh, there for quite some time. Uh, if I go back to settings here, um, you can select the default um, you know, information you want to see here. Okay. Then when you are in uh, the analysis mode, okay, I'm just going to put um, a top here. Example. Okay. Um, you can now into export. Uh, you can either select the word or PowerPoint. So I'm just going to select PowerPoint. You have the default here, so I have contact, counter, etc., etc., uh, the force, um, static image, and I'm just going to uh, select specific folder, okay, and then generate the report. All right, so just uh, processing the whole thing here. And uh, it's just on the other side, but there we go. Okay, and then you have your report already, uh, uh, results, et cetera. And then obviously it's a PowerPoint. You can, you know, add things, remove things, remove comments, uh, but that's quite efficient. You have the same thing in a Word format as well. Okay, so it's all about efficiency here. Um, in terms of um, sharing information with either your peers or some customers, um, we introduced also things to 3.0, the one-click uh, sharing. So here I already put my uh, upload ID, uh, which you can access uh, through the um, website. Okay. Um, so cloud.transvelo.com and then create your account. You have uh, for free, you have access to 50 uh, megabytes and uh, 10 um, private models and then unlimited in terms of public models you can share, okay? Uh, here's um, just my uh, library of uh, things I have and um, I can now you know, share, so for example, I have the link here and just uh, control C and then uh, put in the browser so you can just send it to anybody. Okay, and then you have in your browser a uh, possibility to share uh, information here. There's even an animation you can slow it down or speed it up. Okay. All right, so and you can create this from the interface. So when you do one click share, if you have an animation, it will export an animation here, just a single picture. Uh, you have different options here, uh, compression, uh, et cetera. Uh, you can also uh, password protect uh, this, um, this uh, thing as well, okay? And it's loaded on our uh, cloud, so we are not using uh, Amazon Cloud or uh, yeah, any other um, cloud 
So it's really uh, safe in terms of uh, security. Uh, so check that out. It's quite uh, useful to, uh, to share information. All right, and lastly, uh, because I went way over time, um, about the um, new way to, uh, and that's for obviously our customers, but to uh, activate your license or the interface, uh, now you have to um, you know, enter um, information about the, um, with the license. Um, so what we have created is a document uh, that you can access directly from our website, uh, transferusacom slash LMX. Okay, and here you have all the information you need to, um, you know, uh, activate your uh, interface, the interface UI. Uh, also, uh, information how to replace uh, the new license we will provide for the 3.1. Uh, so you have all the information, it's quite useful. Okay, so it's uh, it's right there on our website. Um, on this note as well, our website uh, you can um, you know contact us through um, this uh, through the tech support. Um, here you can enter name, email, phone, etc. Subject you can even upload files up to a one gig. Um, so you can do that directly here. You can also just contact us directly, and that's most of you already do that, but support at transferamerica.com. Okay. Uh, finally, um, one thing you have access to here is quite interesting uh, in terms of well, the UI uh, descriptions. You have the tutorials we already uh, talked about. You also have access to a reference documentation. Okay, so here you have all our reference documentation and you can learn about, you know, uh, solver, uh, you know, all the equations that you have uh, within uh, our model. Um, so most of the uh, questions you have are answered into this um, reference documentation. Um, support, uh, so that one is more for the translator, um, uh, uh, headquarter, uh, but you uh, also have uh, our information here in case you need to contact us. Okay, so there, you know, several ways to, uh, to get in touch with us. Uh, if you, you know, go through this portal and select the U.S. or any other, you know, Brazil or any other territory here, um, your uh, message will be forwarded to us anyway. So, okay, so no worries about it. Uh, and uh, last thing also, you can click on what's new, it will bring you to a blog, uh, translator.com blog, and you have all this uh, information. That's also what we're gonna have on our new website as well. So, um, you know, stay tuned on that, and uh, we'll be uh, up, um, you know, by basically November, that's what we are, we are target, okay? All right. Um, lastly, just a reminder: we do offer online help. Um, sorry, online training. So, in online help and presentation, uh, we do have um, online trainings available, especially in this period. Um, so, we usually do two-hour sessions, and we can have as many as uh, you want. Obviously, uh, there's an unlimited uh, number of attendees, even though we have, you know recommend to restrict a little bit so that we don't go all over the place. Um, as set topics, we already have, you know, heat treatment, induction, user routine, uh, mastering the software, uh, kind of go with uh, basics as well, uh, automatic optimization, dynalysis, and ring rolling, okay? But we customize uh, the training to your, uh, to your needs. Uh, so just uh, get in touch with us. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll um, you know, design uh, the training for you. All right. <clears throat> Again, thank you very much for uh, your, um, you know, for joining us today. Um, we appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar. Uh, again, we've been over uh, the the time, but we had a, a lot of topics to talk about. Uh, so this webinar has been uh, recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel uh, by Monday. So 
So stay tuned. Um, if you are not yet a subscriber to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe. It is free, so go ahead. Uh, also, not forget to check out our website, www.transverterusa.com. Uh, you'll find a lot of information, papers, and news. Um, also, as I already mentioned on this point, uh, we're in the process of revamping our website, so you'll see a new look and feel soon, and also more news through our blog, uh, which we'll uh, feed uh, regularly. Uh, we'll use it uh, as a main point of communication, so again, stay in touch uh, by visiting our website. Uh, you will soon be able to uh, subscribe uh, to our news so that you do not miss anything. Okay. Uh, again, this uh, new website uh, website is the target is to be available by the fall, uh, and that will going to be the same URL uh, again, transverterusa.com. Uh, so nothing uh, changed here. Uh, with that, I would like to, on behalf of all Transfer uh staff to thank you one more time uh, for joining today. Enjoy the rest of your day and the coming weekend. Thank you very much. You have a good day.